Welcome back into the Sports Buzz. Our next guest needs absolutely no introduction. You know him if you watch any NFL coverage on ESPN. John Clayton does a tremendous job. No matter the season, they'd have to wait until September to get the very latest on the NFL. A pleasure for us to welcome in John Clayton from ESPN on the Smith Enterprise Hotline. John, welcome in. How are you? Great, guys. How are you? We are doing wonderful. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it here. Only 87 days from college football's <laughs> kickoff. That's how crazy we are down here, John. Well, let's put it this way. I know from the NFL side, it seems like it hasn't even stopped. I mean, it's been nonstop now, really, since last training camp. Uh, you know, even now, I mean, what as we speak, there's like 17 mini camps going on this week, and mini camps are going to continue pretty much until the end of June, and then uh, by the 23rd of July, that's when the first training camp opens up. Wow. Next month. You know, uh, let us start, if you don't mind, John, with uh, a story that uh, affects uh, the fellow from Alabama, Brody Coyle, with uh, the latest news of Trent Green being traded from Kansas City to Miami. Uh, I guess it's a two-part question. Number one, about Trent Green, Dante Culpepper at Miami, his status, and about Brody Coyle, your thoughts about Brody uh, seeing some uh, significant playing time with uh, the Chiefs now. Well, the plan all along is to get Brody the starting job at no later than 2008, and that's one of the reasons why they gave Trent Green permission to try to work the trade out with the Dolphins, which took really two months until they got the value that they wanted yesterday. And uh, if you watch Brody last weekend at the minicamp, you can see he's got a great arm. He's still a little uh, inaccurate right now trying to feel comfortable with the offense, which kind of leads you to believe that Damon Heward would start the season. But Brody is obviously going to be taking over that job either by midseason, maybe at the beginning of the season, but no later than the start of the 2008 season. Now, Green, of course, I'm sure he's going to pass his physical today. You know, he'll be the Dolphin leader. This morning, uh, Cam Cameron, Randy Mueller met with Dante Culpepper. They told him he's gonna, they're going to try to trade him. He doesn't want to be traded. So that means probably by no later than Friday, mm -hmm. Culpepper is going to be released and on the street. So uh, kind of in 24 hours, you've got a lot of stuff resolved except who the starting quarterback of the Chiefs is going to be. John, let me ask you about the off the field. Roger Goodell, the NFL commissioner's off the field policy. We've heard about Pac-Man Jones. Wanted to ask you about Michael Vick. First of all, are you in favor of the off the field conduct policy? And number one, what's Michael Vick's future with the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons? Now, I like it as long as uh, Roger doesn't get too carried away, and so far he has not gotten too carried away. Because remember, you know, I think what's happened is that you know, people outside of football are rushing to judgment just any time somebody gets either arrested, charged, or at least involved in some off-season mm -hmm. incident and think that Roger Goodell is going to act immediately. No, what he's doing is he's taking three players that were considered to be problems with repeated violations and then coming down on them. So you really have to have repeated violations to get to Roger Goodell for the conduct policy. That's why Tank, uh, Tank Johnson got what's going to end up being six games, mm -hmm. Chris Henry eight, and then, of course, Pac-Man, I'm sure they're not going to uh, do anything with the appeal other than just say, uh, you know, thanks, but no thanks, and he'll be out for the year. As far as Michael Vick, and that's why I think he's in a different category, even though he's done some dumb things, he still, this is his first violation, if they even get to a charge with the dog fighting. And so I think what is owed him is the chance to go through the court systems, see if he's going to have any kind of conviction or guilty plea or a testimony that's going to at least get the commissioner to act promptly. But I think this one's going to carry through, and nothing happens in 2007 for Vic. But certainly his reputation's going to be damaged, and there is still the potential that he could be charged and maybe later convicted of being involved in dog fighting. And then you go back to uh, the situation with the Falcons. If you're a fan right now, you got uh, question marks hanging over the quarterback issue, and you also got a brand new coach who last year lined it up uh, with the Cardinals at uh, Louisville, and now Bobby Petrino, he's moved up the ladder. He is now NFL coach. So if you're a Falcons fan, talking about a summer with a lot of question marks hanging over it. Oh, yeah, because, I mean, this is probably the biggest decision year for the franchise since the selection of Michael Vick and the trade with, uh, got him there because, you know, you can kind of see that uh, the offense has just kind of hit the wall for three years. They've been the number one run offense, but they're not scoring 20 points a game. They're not going to the playoffs, at least in the last two years, and you can see Vick's numbers starting to at least drain as far as his completions. He's gone from 56% to less than 53%, and if he doesn't get better this year and the team doesn't get better offensively this year, then I think Bobby Petrino is going to have the license to say, I want Vic, 
I don't want Vic, and the owner's going to back him up 100%. They're doing everything possible to make Vic a successful passing quarterback, and if it doesn't work this year, coupled with some of these uh, questions about the dog fighting, I think this is going to be Vic's last year in Atlanta. Let us go the other way. Uh, our team sort of speak parathetically here to the Tennessee Titans up I-65. With Pac-Man now, the, the issues there, uh, Jeff Fisher with uh, you know the Vince Young last year made the Pro Bowl. Of course, there's some asterisk by that. What are your thoughts uh, about the, the Titans coming in, particularly trading away a lot of their uh, receivers mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. far as that part of the game? Uh, how do the Titans address that uh, big need? Well, and that's for the problem because they haven't. I, I think that they've now lessened their talent in two positions around Vince Young, and that concerns me as far as how successful Vince could be this year. You know, certainly he goes eight and five coming out as a rookie and uh, now the rookie of the year. You're thinking now this team with the youth and some of the drafts that they've had are all set to go to the playoffs. Yet they lose two of their top three receivers and really haven't done anything to, re to replace those guys. And they lose two of their top three running backs, even though, again, they can probably come back and get Chris Brown back. Mm -hmm. uh, but you look around and you see here's Vince Young, and he's weaker at wide receiver. He's weaker at running back, yeah. and that means that they're going to be weaker on offense. Mm -hmm. And so I now question if they're going in the right direction because, again, you know, he needs talent around him to make him better. And he's got less talent around him. Right. John, let me ask you about the Houston Texans. D'Amico Ryans was in town this weekend, which I know you're going to be for the John Stoneworth tournament here in a couple weekends in Huntsville. D'Amico Ryans, linebacker, they picked up Matt Schaub, the quarterback, Travis Henry. Is this Houston Texan team going to be a little better this fall? I doubt it. Uh, I think that, you know, first, they're, they're going to be better on defense because, you know, D'Amico Ryan was just sensational last mm -hmm. year coming in and establishing himself as really the best rookie defensive player in the league. And I think that uh, they're making some progress there because, you know, they're still trying to beef up the defensive line. I think they're going to be better on defense. But where my concern is going to be with this trade to bring Matt Schaub in is it's still the same offensive line that beat up David Carr for the last five years. You know, they're going to be a little better at the running back position with Amon. On green, mm -hmm. but you look at the receiver position, the Eric Moulds trade didn't work out. You take a guy like Kevin Walters, who is like a fourth or fifth receiver on Cincinnati, make him a starter. You know, is there enough talent around Matt Schaub for them to get even uh, better than, say, the uh, 16 points a game they scored last year? And I really debate that. So I think that, you know, they'll be a better defensive team, but I'm not sold that they're going to be that much better on offense. And that's not because of Schaub, it's their surrounding offensive talent. John, I could talk all day with you. One thing about you, do a great job. When I grow up, I want to be as good as you, John. So I've got, I got the perfect target to shoot for. You do a great job. Thank you so much for hooking up with us. Okay, thanks. John, All thank right. you. John Clayton does a great job uh, with ESPN talking uh, the NFL. Some good thoughts there. And to answer oh, your question, Texan fans, it looks promising, but uh, according to the best in the biz, yep. as I said in Brooklyn, maybe next year. Mm.